Hello, adventurers! I'm Grey, the sappy, crabby, synesthetic frost pirate, and welcome back to some more Somnautica. Low Zero, where I am in an alien base. We ended off last time in here, did not explore it at all yet, I'm very excited. It looks like that alien over there is playing the cello or something, I don't know. I didn't know these aliens were uh, interested in our music. Well, I guess Alan was very intrigued by the music that we listened to, so... I don't know, maybe maybe they're getting invested in human culture, maybe they're, um, humanaboos? It's like how Americans have weeaboos who are very interested in Japan, in Japan, and Japanese have a maraboos who are very interested in America. These aliens are humanaboos. They all wish they were human. Ancient ornamental plants. Ooh. Very pretty. Molecular scans point to an incredibly slow cell metabolism, which is backed, by, backed up by carbon dating. The plant cells appear to be engaged in a process known as transdifferentiation. This process alters the state of cells and transforms them to a new cell type over time. Through this process, the plant continuously replaces any poor biological material, allowing it to potentially live for incredibly long periods of time. I wish I could do that. I want to live for an incredibly long period of time. The carefully regulated structure of this plant's cellular biology, and the intentional nature of its display, amongst other alien artifacts, suggest that the architect designed and cultivated this plant for some kind of aesthetic or cultural purpose that we can only speculate about. Alright, and there's a lot of these around here. I'm guessing that's the, that's the main thing I need to go to. I'm just taking a peek around the edges here. Okay, I don't think there's anything else of value. Alright, let's go check out the big boy. Big statue boy. Oh boy. Oh, there's a component here. Ooh, this is the body of an architect, isn't it? Architect skeleton. A dense synthetic skeletal structure made from unknown alien components. It is estimated that the skeletal material would score a 10 on the Mohs test for material hardness. I'm guessing that's the top of the Mohs test for hardness? Is that like diamonds? It's highly resistant to shattering due to its incredibly strong impact strength. Oh! What was the Mo I forget like how the Mohs test exactly works. It's been a little while. But... Yeah, so it, I'm guessing it's very hard, but also unlike diamonds, very resistant to shattering. Because diamonds are very, like, hard. Like, you can't scratch them with nearly anything unless you're using other diamonds. But if you hit them really hard, like with a hammer, they can shatter. Like, they can break apart. They won't scratch, but they'll break. Are you okay, Alan? It is not often that I gaze upon the form of a fallen architect. Is this place another sort of sanctuary? It's peaceful. Beautiful, even. As the bacterium spread, the continuation of life became uncertain. This is a place to reflect. I think I understand. Well, this water must be very hot, considering how it's bubbling. But I guess it keeps me warm when I stand in it. Not that it's that cold in here in the first place. It's honestly like a greenhouse in here. It's probably quite warm. Let's scan this guy. Oh. Oh, I can't actually scan this guy. Where does that water come from? Probably a little opening up to the sea, but does it get cleared out at the bottom? Otherwise, it would just keep getting filled up. Regardless, very pretty place. I like this place a lot. I'd like to be here and just chill for a little while. But I don't need to, because I'm feeling good right now in general. I don't know, I just feel good on Sundays. Because I'm recording this on Sunday, by the way. Something about it being the weekend just makes me relax a little bit. Have some more fun. I've got some work to do tomorrow. I am on my rotation. So I've been progressing. Oh, stay away from me. I've been progressing some more in my institutional rotation since I'm in pharmacy school, for those who don't know. And I'm currently doing my hospital rotation, which is called institutional. Uh, what do I want to drop? I'll drop one of those too. I feel like some uranite is more rare, so I'm going to grab that, because there's mushrooms everywhere around here. I'm just going to fill up my inventory of these resources and get out. Hello there, shark squid. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Okay, so where's the way out of here again? Was it up here? It was up here. Okay. I hope I can make it out and not die. That it would not be ideal if I died right now. I don't remember where the other oxygen plant was in here. And here's the alien things. That means this is the way up. I think I can make it to my prawn suit. Probably. Okay, this way. I'm just gonna gun it. 
I, I don't recall where the other oxygen plant is, so I think just gunning for it is the ideal play here. It might be a little bit close. This might be a close call. Oh, I'm a little bit nervous right now. So it's above me. I gotta find the crevasse. Okay, we'll make it. We'll make it. Yup. There you go. We don't even need the second oxygen plant. Okay, so as I was saying, I'm feeling pretty good right now. Um, last time I talked, I, I did like one or two days in my rotation, and I was talking about me learning the ropes and all that sort of thing. I can talk a little bit more about it now because I've gone through a whole week of it, including the weekend. So my preceptor who runs it worked one of the weekends on Saturday, so yesterday as of this recording. And so I went um, for a good amount of time on that day as well. It wasn't a big deal. Like, I was fine of going on Saturday. So I, it was a bit different on Saturday. But I've been getting used to the routine of that hospital now that I'm at. I won't say the name of it, but... Um, I'm, I'm starting to get the vibe of like what I need to do each day. So I come in, I check the um, patient's diabetes charts and things like that to be sure there's no issues with their INR levels. Or no INR, um, their glucose levels. And I check any warfarin patients for INR levels as well. So I'm basically making sure that the labs that come back for patients each day um, have no issues and that we don't need to make any changes. And if we do, we'll make those changes as well, or at least recommend them to the doctor. And then... Along with that, um, I'll file the paperwork and read all the reports and make sure there's no issues there, no discrepancies in what's on the papers and what's in reality, that sort of thing, and check off on everything that I've read through it all. And then I also have the added responsibility now of going through the patient's charts online and or in their in their software, their like patient database, and um, updating it with any of the new lab results they have and. Um, checking their regimens and being sure that it's correct and that sort of thing, which needs to be done every single day. So I've learned how to do that and kind of update all those things and sign off on that as well. So those are like the stuff I do right away. And then we have the usual things we do, which is looking through the patient's medicines and looking through the um, different documentation they have because the patients at my hospital tend to come from different places or have been to many places over time. And so they have documents from like five different locations of different medications on it and different medical histories and things like that. And we're consolidating them all into one like one big document and making sure the medication list is right and then counseling the patients on all their new medications, making sure all their old ones that they were taking at home are correct, telling them if they're not supposed to be taking anything that they were taking at home, that sort of thing. And then um, once we do all that counseling, I will write down all that we talked about into the notes as well, into like the charts. And that'll be like a record of all that we've discussed. So th that's like some of the basic stuff. We don't we do a lot more than that as well. Oh, I'm getting a bit thirsty. Eh, it's not a big deal. Oh, see? Oh, the aquarium module! Wait, wait we got... Oh, we, we've now got it! Okay. Fab actually, we already have the fabricator module. What the? That guy just came out of nowhere. Literally out of nowhere. It's phase through existence. Actually, what I can do is I can drink some of this water. And then I can take this one with me. Ah, oh, yeah. Nice. Ooh, there's a recipe here. What is it? Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, it's nothing of use to me. Oh, I can't take the nutrient block. What can I drop right now? Oh, and there's a little Alterapedia here. Okay, i read that in a little bit. But as I was mentioning, um, there's a lot of other things we do as well, depending on the day. Like, every day has some different things we need to do. Um, in general, though, I, I also work on the inventories. So the hospital has these systems that are called PIXIS systems, P-Y-X-I-S. Um, if you look them up, you might, you might know about them if you're in medicine already, or in, in any sort of medical field. They're basically medication storage. Oh! What the? That thing is big! Ooh, I wanna say hi. Hey, hey. Why, why are you so big? What the? Oh, whoa! Are they fighting? They be fighting. Is that a Leviathan? I got the bad feeling that I should not be going for scanning. Oh, crap. Did you just get bitten? How do you still have the energy to come after me? 
I got the feeling I shouldn't be going after this guy right now, but I want to say hi. Whoa! Look at him! Take this. Oh, crap! Oh! Oh! Whoa, that kind of hurt. Okay. Okay, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm leaving. I have no idea what that thing is. I'll come back later to scan you whenever I feel more comfortable doing so. But for now, I leave. I leave. I said I leave. I said I leave. You can't chase me forever, punk. But yeah, there are these systems called Pixis where all the medications are stored. And it basically keeps them secure, like a lock safe, and keeps track of the records of everything. Like, it, it's very strong, like the containers. They feel very premium. And from what I've heard, they're super expensive as well. But yeah, they keep track of all the medications that go in and out. Um, they allow you to count them and check that everything's correct and verify everything. And I'm, I've learned how to put new medications in that we've ordered and that sort of stuff and to count the amount that's currently in there and be sure everything's accurate and that sort of thing. So I, I do a lot of random stuff, pharmacy stuff at the hospital. I, I enjoy it, actually. I don't know if it's my favorite section of pharmacy, but I enjoy it more than... Uh, Oh, I'm sure I enjoy it more than I would a regular retail place like CVS or Walgreens. The only thing that I'm, I would be nervous about with being at a hospital is I do like having my weekends off and having free time and not having to worry about work once I'm back at home. And from what I've seen from my preceptor, like she enjoys the busyness of the hospital, but you often have to be on call all weekend. So if you get a call that they need something urgently, you're going to be driving in there, whether you like it or not. And... Sometimes you have to work on the weekends as well, which um, which my preceptor does too. So it's it's a busy time, and you have to be ready to come in basically whenever you're called to come in. And I don't know if I'd like that. I just I just like being free when I'm back. But we have a lot of resources now, so we can craft some pretty cool stuff. Welcome aboard, Captain. Let's see. What I want to make right now, I would like to get another prawn suit depth upgrade, if at all possible. But we need Kyanite, which we do not have yet. Actually, do we have any sort of prawn suit depth upgrade? I don't know if we have. I don't even know if we put the basic depth upgrade. It requires synthetic fibers, which required us to use. Let's see. Spiral plant. Mmm, that's the one thing we can't make, though. Where do we get spiral plants? I might need to look it up. Okay, apparently, from what I've been told, and by what I've been told, I mean what I've looked up, it is found in the purple vents biome. That's all I know about it. Um, so... I might go over there and start exploring from the underground in that area to see if I can find it. For now though, I'll just make what I can. I would like to make an ultra high capacity tank, but it looks like it'll be a while before I can do that. Sea truck depth upgrade mark 2 I can't make yet either. So pretty much anything in here I can't make. I can make a swim charge fin, which would be nice actually. Would be nice. Fins, polyaniline, and a wiring kit. We have fins of course. Polyaniline requires, let's see, a hydrochloric acid and gold, which is three young cotton anemone and a salt cluster. We have plenty of these, so we should be fine on that front. And we have salt constantly coming in from this thing as well. Look at all this water we get from this. Every time we come back, we just have another 100 water waiting for us. Which is real nice. And a gold. Actually, we ought to start off by making the hydrochloric. And then polyaniline. What else do we need? We needed a... Uh, let's see, we needed a wiring kit. Alright, and here we go, swim charge fins. Oh, I gotta take off my fins. Oop. Alright, so we can use this to charge us whenever we go exploring, so we shouldn't have to worry too much about our, um, our sea glide running out of power anymore, because I think now if we swim with it, like we just go out with it, let me see. Yeah, so we basically have the infinite version of this now, because as we swim, it goes up to 67%, so even if it's making us swim faster, it's still charging as we go. That is really nice. So we never have to worry about the battery of this thing, the Sea Glide, ever again. That is what I wanted. Now the rest of these things, like, I'm probably not going to be holding a lot of these items so much when I swim. The scanner, probably I will be though, so I don't really have to worry too much about charging the scanner either. Really good. Also, I'm going to go ahead and make ourselves a Spy Pangling. I'm excited to control this guy. Oh, he's so cute! Spy Benglings. Scientists may have never discovered that Benglings incubate their eggs in small cave burrows, often alongside thermal lily roots. Alright, we'll get a remote as well. 
So we'll have this ready for whatever adventures we decide to go on. Does he take up a lot of space? No, a very small amount of space. Alright, very nice. Alright, so I think we're about ready to go off on another adventure because we are going to need to get those spiral plant clippings to make anything we want to make. Let's grab our batteries and let's go. We can make an aquarium module now, which is nice, if we want to just have a lot of live food, I mean specimens, inside of our aquarium to take with us wherever. Pretty convenient for long expeditions. And where do we make the snow fox again? I don't quite know where we're supposed to craft that. I'll figure it out eventually, I'm sure. I, in fact, I'm pretty sure I could figure it out in my tab menu, but it's fine. So we're here in the purple vents. In order to get the spiral plant clippings, there must be a way to go underground around here. So I'm going to be looking for a little crevasse, if at all possible. This looks a bit promising. Oh, I like watching this thing just grow right here. Look, it's going to blast open. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. You can see the rocks rising and it's about to boop. Burst up. Okay, I think I found the way in. It's right over here. What is this plant? Have I scanned this plant? Nope. Wait. Wait a moment. Is that, is that a part of the Mercury too? It is. Some metal salvage. And eh, you know what? I might as well pick up the metal salvage. So we can go down in here, and I think that's where we find the spiral plant, but this is new. I don't think we've explored this part of it. And we do need some more titanium, so might as well fill up our guy with this. If we need to clear up space, we can always throw them out later. So this part of the ship fell right over this ravine here. Where would the entrance be? Ah, okay, I think I found the way in. It's right past my prawn suit over here. Oh! Leave my prawn suit alone, boy. Punk. Jerk. There's a lot of metal salvage, so we can get a ton of titanium here. This looks to be the smallest piece of the Mercury 2 that I've found. So there probably won't be a huge amount to find in here. But there's definitely going to be at least some good loot, so... Might as well equip this. Maybe I should have made a headlamp, because I know we've unlocked the ability to craft that. Is this guy just biting my uh, prawn suit? Better not be. I put him right at the entrance, my prawn suit. That way... He is right here for me. Gregory is here for me at all times to provide me with vital oxygen for my living. What's in here? I'll just have some more reactor rods. We have a lot of reactor rods now. Oh. Why is he trying to Is he like detecting me from outside? It might be. Hmm. Let's see. We got, we got some more battery or some more power cells. Some copper. What is that? Jukebox disc! We got a freaking jukebox disc, I got a skeleton to shoot a creeper, and now we got another song to play. Hell yeah. Alright. And this is probably going to be the thing that I find in all of these pieces, isn't it? What was that thing called? I forget, it's like that rod-shaped thing. It's taking forever to open, though, as they always do. I guess you got to be thorough and very skilled with using the laser cutter in order to get it done. It's probably, like, a really hard shell. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. The parallel processing unit, we already have... All of them we might ever need. Stop biting everyone. Who are you fighting right now? How's Gregory doing? Gregory's at 90%. Oh, I can't actually exit here. I was too close to the door. I don't know if there's much left to find in here. I did find another copper wire just sitting on the ground. But other than that, there's no logs or anything. This is like the smallest piece of the Mercury 2 that fell apart. Which I guess if a ship splits in pieces... There's going to be some smaller sections. But there's no other things that I can see to pick up in here and no other areas to explore. I think that might be it. It's kind of sad that there's no databank entries in here. No, it's fine. I think I might actually leave a beacon here. And I'm going to name it Mercury to Small and Purple Cave. And P Cave. Alright, so that'll be sort of a marker for both the underground cave of the geotherm or the purple vents biome area, and also just this piece of the Mercury 2. I mean, if I want some more titanium, I can always come over to this ship and take it from the metal scrap around here. You know what? I got what I wanted from that place anyway. We got a jukebox disc. The most powerful item in the entire game. 
What more could we even ask for? Ooh, what's this? Docking module? Wait, 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 wait. What's a docking module? As the most user-requested Sea Trek edition, the docking module provides capacity to attach one standard pro- It is the most user-requested edition, isn't it? Okay! I was wondering if I would ever need to use the Sea Trek ever again in this game, because I used it a little bit, didn't see any, mo any more use for it, because I would just use the prawn suit to get everywhere. But no! This will give a use for it! Ah, yeah. Mechanical arms extend to automatically secure the prawn suit to the vehicle on approach. Internal features are limited due to the amount of structural support built into the walls of the module. Includes control panel for detaching prawn suit and bright yellow ladder for ease of es exit or escape. Uh, must be attached as a final module to function. This module is powered by the Citrix main cabin. Prawn suit not, inclu not included. Alright. We also got a, uh, a log earlier that I forgot to read. I don't remember exactly what the entry was that I found, but it might have been this one because I don't remember reading this one before. Regardless, I'm going to read it right now anyway. Control room rapid depressurization. To weld team and electrical. We're getting closer. I know the control room will change the process of base building. It contains all the information you need in a singular place. Energy delegation for low sunlight areas, build layout, structural information, etc. We're leaps and bounds away from V1, which literally just rolled to the bottom of the ocean. Even on flat ground. Rapid implosion is supposed to be painless. I hope that's true. Definitely a better way to go than the electrical fire in V5.7. Poor way to go. Super unfortunate radio call to overhear. Jasmine was the latest worker that volunteered to test the control room. For hazard pay, of course. She was on the radio examining some information panels when she experienced... Uh, rapid depressurization due to a hole breach. Apparently, the panels were welded poorly and blew a hole in the wall. So, no hazard pay for her. Or anyone else, for that matter. At least she didn't suffer. This next build should have all the kinks ironed out. We better hope so. God, freaking crappy company, am I right? I feel like hazard pay is not worth it if you die. I don't know, that might just be me. I, I'm not from Altera, so I can't really confirm nor deny. That's just how I feel about the matter. What are these guys? I think I tried scanning these guys before. Yep, it's not working. Alright. Let's take a look around. Actually, this seems to go down quite far, and I want to spend a good amount of time exploring, so I think I'm going to save it for next episode. We have a whole new area to explore next time, so I'm very excited. If you all are enjoying Subnautica Below Zero, I would really appreciate a like, subscription, or comment. Wait, I didn't quite get that right. <laughs> uh, I'm having a good time, though. That's all for now, and I hope to see you on the next adventure.